I want to talk about Garendo, the man of the hour, the hero. He was so great. I was so happy to see him go. So Jordan Mason goes down thinking they, they could lose this game right here uh, if, if someone doesn't step up. It ain't Debo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's not a running back anymore. It ain't Patrick Taylor Jr. He's on this team to play special teams. It's Garendo. Mm-hmm. And on the final drive, he go, they get the ball back 144. He's got nine carries for 23 yards. Mm-hmm. And in the press box, I don't know about you, but I'm thinking they're going to hand off to Garendo twice. He's going to go nowhere. They're going to throw in complete on third down. They're going to lose. Mm-hmm. First down, 76 yards. He probably could have finished. He said he wanted to waste a test. Fine. But wow. What, what, what <laughs> did that run? Did this performance change your opinion of Isaac Garendo? And can he sort of carry the, the running game um, for the next few weeks if Mason's out with a shoulder injury? No, it didn't change my opinion of Isaac Garendo at all. A running back is my favorite position, Grant. Um, I love the position. Um, uh, I think that um, you know, I could go on and on about the about running back, but uh you gotta give them time and you actually have to invest in a running back to get the best out of him, which means that you gotta give him carries. Uh we have running backs who um they uh they need carries as the game goes on so they can be able to collect data into how the defense is playing them. That's how Jordan Mason's runs. That's how Jordan Mason runs. That's how Isaac Garendo runs. Uh, I think, you know, if we just want to go with height, weight, speed, I mean, he's a dream, you know, six foot plus 230 pounds, four, three athlete, uh, you know, strong runner. He's really, he's something that you want in the backfield. Now, one thing that I like about him is once he gets his foot in the ground, right? He gets that center lower gravity going, and he's a load to bring down. I mean, and he's just one of those guys where he has functional strength. If he actually started learning how to lower his pads, he'd be a completely different back. But the fact that his core is strong enough for him to run as high as he is, right, as he does, is very commendable. I think that his biggest issue right now is vision. He doesn't have it, right? Yeah. He doesn't know how to pick the holes. He doesn't know how to marry his steps with the point of attack. He doesn't know how to press the hole. And it just, you know, it's a it's a bit of a cluster, to be honest with you. However, you ain't going to get better if you don't play him, right? And I think that... You got no choice now. He's your best option. Yeah, yeah and at the same time, the, my only thing with running back is that if you just, if, if, if you got turnover issues, then we can't, we literally can't, you know, yeah. play you. But yeah. outside of that, um, I think that it'd be crazy for them not to figure out how to use him. And I understand Bobby Turner, man, he's class personified. I love Coach Turner, right? But, you know, old dogs got to learn new tricks, man. I understand that this guy is not a zone running back, and that's what you do, Coach Turner. I understand. But there's different ways that you can use Isaac Garendo where his skill set is highlighted. Gap scheme, right? Duo. Right. You can get him out in this. I'm stealing this one from you, Grant, but you can get him out in space. Use him as a receiver. Use screen. him in the slot. Get him a quick screen. Right. Screen. Where you, you get that automatic physicality and that speed immediately on the sideline. And, you know, Isaac, you, can, you, can, you could put D, you could put Debo in motion because he draws eyes. Go put him from right to left. Have the defense looking over here. Boom. Screen to the right to Garendo. Like you could do stuff like that all day. That's why you my dog, bro, because you and I are literally like Scotty. We like we like Pippen yeah. and Jordan right now, because really what I was going to say is one the what we don't realize what we've lost in Debo. Let's just stop right here. Debo's washed. I'm tired of it. OK, yeah. he's not the same. He's not the same athlete. Um, All of this, you know, this a huge emergence of being in shape. He's already out of shape again, just from being hurt and gaining weight again, man. All right. So I, I, I'm not the only one who sees it. He looks like a case sausage in his, in his uniform, okay? He's, he's coming out of that thing. All right, so look, the facts are the facts. You ain't going to be able to get instant offense out I'm of the I'm not Debo allowed to anymore. talk about how any players uh, look in their uniform. That's out, out of bounds for me these days. Well, I am. I don't care. So look, <laughs> my thing is, is that, uh, look, with Debo, man, Kyle, I understand why Kyle, how Kyle uses Debo, and I don't blame him. He's instant offense, okay? He's he's an easy button, right? When mm-hmm. things are messed up, you can still throw the ball to him and just get instant yards and physicality. That's yeah. not what you get anymore out of him. 
You got to get that out of Isaac Garendo. You can find that skill set in different players. That's what I think Isaac Garendo brings us. All right. So here's what I here's what I th- see from Garendo. Uh, I see the comparison to Raheem Moster. I'm not sure Raheem Moster was a starting running back in college either. These are both guys who were like late to the position, played a little wide receiver, upright running style, and 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 Moster like wasn't good right away. Like when the time he finally became like the guy on the Niners, he was 28, 29, and like he so he had a lot of experience learning the system, and maybe he maybe he would have looked like Garendo at Garendo's age, but right now like. I, if you give Garendo 10 carries, I feel like seven or eight of them are going to be not so good. So they have to, like you said, they have to find concepts that he's comfortable with. And to me, it's outside zone. Like, I don't like him running between the tackles right now. I don't think he has a vision for it. I don't think he's particularly decisive. I don't think he's particularly elusive. But he has incredible bursts to the outside. Raheem mm-hmm. Mostert-esque bursts. And the Niners' best blocker, at least used to be, was George Kittle. And I don't think, like, as good as Jordan Mason is, I don't think he really has the burst to take advantage of that block way on the edge. He's more like cutting it back, getting downhill, which is great. But Mostert used to have, like, the most, like, the easiest six yard runs in the history of the world just because he could run behind Kittle and, like, run out of bounds. He, would get, he wouldn't get touched. He'd be like, game seven. Like, oh, <laughs> how? I, I think Garendo could do stuff like that. And it doesn't require, like, a ton of vision, it just requires being decisive. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like there's a there's a tons of way there's tons of ways to use Isaac Garendo. I think that what can I mean, and then you have to engineer it, right? So what you what you lose out of CMC, you engineered by bringing in other receivers and bringing in a tough run game with Jordan Mason. What we possibly because we really don't know where Jordan Mason stands right now, but what you possibly lose out of Jordan Mason is the interior run game and the physicality. You can get that out of Patrick Taylor Jr., right? Patrick Taylor Jr., I know, I know, but this is not the time for you to That's just, like saying you can get it out of Tevin Coleman, but worse. No, Patrick Taylor Jr. is a big back. He's over yeah, 200 he could run into over, defense. He could run in defensive players and hit them very hard when he gets his two and a half yards. I'm sorry. I, pause. You know oh, what? But, but, they but, won. But I'm going to say a pausable statement right now, but you got to tenderize pausable. the meat. Pause. You got to tenderize. I'm serious, man. Like what you really have to do is you have to sausage casings and tenderizing meat, man. It's too early for this, man. I'm sorry. I'm on the West Coast. Syntax between those two comments. (laughs) Oh, look. All I'm saying is is that all I'm saying is is that what you do need is that you got to have a run game and you have to be able to. You the defense needs to know that you're going to run the ball just for the hell of it. Like we are going to run the ball, and those are the carries that you could give Patrick Taylor Jr. I see those runs, those interior runs, those runs that tire out those linebackers. So when they have to run to the sidelines to go get Isaac Garendo, they're a step slower, right? You got to build the run game. It's a sum of all parts. You just can't be lazy and give it to Christian McCaffrey. That that, that, that option is not here anymore. So you're saying that Garendo went off because Patrick Taylor Jr. tenderized him. No, I'm saying there's a possibility down the line. Stop trying to put what, yo, I'm don't ask me. With you. I'm messing yeah. with you. 